Good morning. Welcome to Cheek and Power Feed, your daily market digest. Today is Tuesday, August 14th, 2018. I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Cheek and Analytics. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Power Feed TV brought to you today and every day by Cheek and Analytics in conjunction with StockCharts.com and StockCharts TV. You can sign up to receive Cheek and Power Feed for free at www.chakenanalytics.com forward slash power feed TV. So U.S. equities were mostly lower on Monday with the major indexes finishing near their worst levels of the day. Energy, materials, and financials underperformed. Healthcare and tech outperformed, as did, as did some of the defensive plays. Treasuries were mostly weaker. Curve saw a little bit of steepening. The dollar underperformed the yen, which you would expect in a risk-off type environment, but was stronger against the euro. Gold was down over a percent and a half and WTI crude lost about 60 basis points, but it did end off the worst levels of the day. Breath on both the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ were negative 1.9 to 1. We are seeing a little bit of relief this morning as we get to the desk. S&P futures are up about 40 basis points. Uh, Asia was mixed overnight. Japan was an outperformer with the Nikkei up over 2%. European equities bouncing here. Treasuries are weaker. The dollar is stronger against the yen and euro. Uh, the rebound this morning morning in the Turkish lira is the main focus in the currency markets. Gold is up 20 basis points and WTI crude is up nearly 1%. So as we turn to the charts, we can see S&P 500 continue to fade from resistance at that 2850 to 2873 zone. Um, again, seeing a little bit of a rebound today, but bigger picture support comes into play at 2800. 2771, 2741. The rising 200 day moving average is at 2710. As we said, resistance comes into play 2850, 2873. RSI still has not been able to become overbought. It's been trying, right? This is the this recent leg higher was the, was pretty close, uh, but not there yet. Encouragingly, the RSI does remain above 50. I mean, even with the drawdown yesterday in the market, RSI went out at 52 change. Uh, and shaken money flow remains bullish, although it has been declining. We have seen some some investors taking money off the table here, especially uh, late in the day, a few week closes. So it's just something to keep an eye on, especially as everybody's now turned their attention to emerging markets. And we'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later and what we think that that means for the U.S. market in general. But from a strategic standpoint, no change. Consolidation within a secular uptrend likely resolves to the upside that's the bigger picture view. In the near term, seasonals work against the S&P 500 as August and September are tough, especially the next three weeks. Uh, additionally, in midterm elections years, it's not uncommon to see kind of a four to 10% pullback in the market here in the US leading up to the elections. And then once we start to get some clarity on the elections, that sets the stage for, for a nice move higher over the ensuing 12 months. So that's kind of the playbook. That's the framework in which we're watching. As always, we'll let price dictate. Right now, um, you know, the story is we're not ready to break out just yet likely to see a test of 2800 before starting to move higher could see a deeper test as i said as seasonals work against us your market in a minute s p 500 falls for a fourth straight day but risk sentiment has improved this morning as the turkish lira is stable after the sharp sell-off over the past few days Healthcare is emerging as leadership. Today is Tuesday. We do our sector relative note for Cheek and Analytics subscribers where we dig in at the sector level, see who's leading, who's lagging, what trends are reversing, what trends are likely to resume, uh, et cetera. You know, big picture, healthcare and tech um, are market leadership. Tech is established leadership and within tech, software and internet offsetting weakness in semiconductors. Healthcare is emerging leadership as big pharma is now coming on to join services and equipment as market leadership. We touched on pharma last week a little bit. We'll look at healthcare today. Futures do point to a higher open. From a power bar perspective, Dow, six to two in favor of the bulls. Remember that uh, this number was as high as seven. Looks like somebody slipped into the neutral zone. S&P 500 saw some slight deterioration with the drawdown yesterday. 97 bullish or very bullish stocks for 69 bearish or very bearish stocks. NASDAQ seeing some deterioration as well. Remember last week, this was better than three to one. Um, you know, we're, 
we're still three to one, but you know, slight deterioration here in small caps as well, seeing a little bit of deterioration. But from a big picture perspective, all of the power gauges for the major U.S. indices are skewed to the bullish side. Bond saw a slight downtick yesterday. According to the power bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks remain somewhat bullish. Major indexes are mixed. We can see the choppy trading for the S&P 500. However, you know, nothing's really changed in our view. And you know, what we're seeing in the power bars for the major indices back up what we're seeing from a trend perspective. Aetna is our stock of the day for power feed subscribers. AET closed at 194.84 yesterday, up 16 basis points in a down tape. Has a very bullish power gauge rating due to very strong earnings performance, very positive expert activity, and attractive financial metrics. So let's walk through the process. Uh, and right away, I can see some aspects of this chart that concern me. Very bullish stocks, strong trend, strong industry, very bullish rating down here. It's outperforming the market. So we know that with the market in agreement with our model, with a strong trend and a strong industry. This is the type of stock we want to look at. Obviously, you've heard me preach this over and over again. It's part of the process. However, Aetna is currently overbought as it trades kind of into resistance at the January highs. And something that always concerns me when a stock is trading near, you know, an all-time high, a 52-week high, a local high, something that, you know, is relevant, something that's important. And I would argue that any stock that's taking out its January highs uh, to make a new 52-week high, is that's an important level. And what concerns me here is the intensity of bearish money flow. Institutional investors are using this move higher to sell the stock. And that concerns me. Couple that with an overbought rating by our proprietary overbought oversold indicator and Aetna becomes a name that I want to watch, but not necessarily one that I would want to add to the portfolio here and now. Maybe see a little pullback to the 190 level, hold the rising trend line, work off the overbought condition, start to attract some institutions. You know, it's, it's one of those things, right? Sometimes... Timing matters, right? Especially in a market like this where stock picking is important, timing matters. This is the type of stock we want to own. We just don't want to own it here and now. Adding Aetna to a watch list, we'll keep an eye on it. Sector tracker moving over the last five days, and there is red across the board. You know, S&P 500 uh, is down four days in a row. So in an environment like that where everything is red, Market's been down four days in a row. There's some geopolitical concerns. There's trade concerns, et cetera. What we want to do from a sector perspective is look for who's leading, look for who's lagging, right? Just because technology is down, technology is down 25 basis points over the past five days. It's clear leadership. Healthcare, down 33 basis points over the last five days. That's clear leadership. These are two of the sectors that I've been highlighting for our clients you know, constantly, right? From a power bar perspective, these two groups have been in the top four for months now. Tech and healthcare, uh, along with utilities, are the top three sectors from a power bar perspective. Staples, we've called the trend, the, um, the move higher counter trend in nature, and we want to fade it. We continue to do so. Materials, uh, you know, really as much emerging market play as anything else. Real estate is really frustrating me. I did you know, the relative chart today in my note. It's still going sideways. It's just taking time to play out. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now, but we are starting to lose our patience a little bit. Utilities, again, another group that's bottoming on a relative basis. Energy, middle of the pack here over the past five days, but the view is bifurcated. We've talked about it. Look at refiners and EMP. We want to avoid the services. From an industry focus, this one's interesting, right? Because tech has been leadership and leadership's been driven by internet and software offsetting weakness, especially on a relative basis in the semiconductors. Because over the past six months, semiconductors have actually outperformed the S&P 500 by about 3%. However, the power bar ratio, which measures future potential is weak, more bearish stocks, six bearish stocks to only four bullish stocks. It's currently ranked number 16 of the 21 subsectors that we track. Has moved up one slot, but you know, semis, you, you've heard me talk about it a lot. We want to see semis kind of get in gear, especially if the market breaks out. We'd like to see semis return to a leadership role. Right now, it's kind of, they've been sideways on a relative basis since about November. So they haven't broken down. It's not a disaster, 
but they're not moving higher either. Some of the indicative names in this group, Siva, Maxim, and SunPower, all have very bearish power gauge ratings. So those are stocks we obviously want to avoid. And we'll walk through the process on SunPower today. Keep in mind, this is a low price stock. Very bearish, weak trend, weak industry. Here's that very bearish rating. Here is the underperformance. The market is in agreement with the model to the downside this time. The dynamic duo is in gear, whatever you want to call it. It's a powerful combination. Very bearish stock, underperforming the market. We don't want to own it at the very least. Tactically, we want to see if there's an opportunity to get it out of the portfolio, maybe buy put options to participate on the downside. And I'd say the setup here looks good for that type of strategy, right? Below a declining trend line, bearish money flow. Stock is currently overbought based on our overbought, oversold indicator. If you're long sun power, I like getting it out of the portfolio. If you position yourself for downside and in individual stocks, potentially look at you know put options or, or put spreads on sun power. Regardless, this stock sets up bearishly. We want to avoid it. Trending over the past uh, S&P 500 movers yesterday. Nielsen up on some activist activity. It is a bearish name. They're being urged to kind of sell the company or sell parts of it. Cisco, positive earnings, stock up 6%. AMD. Uh, you know, AMD is one of these names. It's, it's a neutrally rated stock. It's had a powerful move. It has everybody's attention. Uh, I know a lot of the, the technicians that I speak to, as well as a lot of smart technical analysts and traders who I follow uh, on Twitter. AMD is just got, has everybody's attention. The stock's working. It's, it's kind of moving higher from a small consolidation. It is neutrally rated in cheek and analytics, but it was up three and a half percent today. So I wanted to call it out. AD, APD and News Corp round out the bottom, the bottom two there. Uh, on the loser side, Harley Davidson is a very bearish stock down five, nearly uh, a little over 4%. XEC also a very bearish stock down over three and a half percent. Uh, Lennar is a neutral stock, but I've been bearish on the builders um, as well as their supply chains, right? You, you, you've heard me talk about names like, like uh, Whirlpool, which have been just absolute messes to the downside. Lennar, part of the home builders group. I, I'm just, I remain bearish on home builders. Stock has a neutral rating. It was down nearly 5% yesterday. Whole logics kind of bucks the trend of strength within med devices down 4%. Again, a neutrally rated stock. So, you know, for me, uh, not a lot to do here with this screen today, unfortunately. A lot of neutrals, you know, very bearish stocks going down. That's what we like to see. Nielsen's kind of a special situation at this point. Earnings update, as we said, we saw Cisco move higher, a neutrally rated stock. They met estimates, but that was enough to move the stock higher. Home Depot trading up this morning, as well as advanced auto parts on there. Prince Tapestry TPR also trading up. That's a bearish name. So let's look to see if that fades. Some, you know, something we've been noticing is that you know some earnings gaps on neutral names and bearish names. They might gap higher, but they're hard pressed to hold those gains. So let's keep an eye on Tapestry TPR. It's a bearish stock trading up this morning. Let's see if it can hold on to those gains. If it starts to fade, it might be an opportunity to open to the bearish side. After the close today, we will hear from Agilent. So the Turkish Lira has brought to bear weakness in the emerging markets. And if you look at a lot of emerging market currencies, they are weak. I have today a chart of EEM, the iShares MSCI Emerging Market ETF. And you can see uh, you know, clear downtrend since topping out with all the broader markets in January below the 200 day moving average, which has shifted from rising to flat now testing support around the $42 level. What's interesting to me though, is that this shift in the RSI leads me to believe that we are heading lower in emerging markets. You know, that's not to say we can't get a bounce here. This, this $42 level uh, is certainly support at this stage of the game. However, I think those bounces can be used to, uh, to lighten up. Healthcare as emerging leadership. You, I talked about pharma. Here's XLV trading near the January highs, but here's XLV on a relative basis moving up and out. RSI has shifted to bullish ranges. And within that realm, we like Regeneron making the turn. Very bearish stock with a strong trend. Over, oversold, but uh, very bullish stock rather. And it's leading the market. This is the type of name that we want to look at within the healthcare space. Triggered a buy signal today. So you can get powerful, profitable stock ideas and more.
sign up for PowerFeed. Have a great day, everyone. Talk to you tomorrow.